everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to Carol's Daily Sauce. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to click on that bell so that you are reminded of all of the videos that I upload. I did want to come back to you all today with some news stories, some wacky, some weird, and strange news stories. I normally try to bring about every time I bring them because I think anything more than that would be way too much. So the first story that we're discussing is the death of the grumpy cat. I don't know if you all know it or not, but the grumpy cat was a cat who ended up going actually viral on the internet back in, I believe it was 2012. And it was... boy but it was a girl and it was just this big cat and every time y'all my eye I stuck myself in the eye and it is so irritated so excuse me I thought it was a boy because he just see I'm still referring to her as a boy she just never smiled unfortunately she just passed away this past Friday November the 1st due to complications with a urinary tract infection. As I said before, this cat gained notoriety in the social media limelight, I guess you could say, back in 2012, where she was really popular for a lot of different memes and everything. And she was known to always just have that grumpy look on her face. I will include a picture. The owner said that the cat was really a part of their family and that they will definitely miss her. She was known to millions for making them smile, even when they had a bad day. Basically, the cat got her name when she was just a year old. She had an underbite that caused her, instead of her mouth to be in a position of a smile, it was in a position of that of a frown. And so, poor little, what was her name? You know, they never said her name. They, I guess they wanted her to be still referred to as the grumpy cat. One thing that everybody was often reminded about when they thought of the grumpy cat is she always looked like you might feel. So, we just want to keep the grumpy cats family, you know, just lift it up. Honestly and truly, people, when they lose their animals, you guys, it, it, it is a part of the family. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. Moving on to our next story. We had a gentleman by the name of Shay Bradley. Shay was from Ireland. I speak in past tense because unfortunately, Shay has passed away. But at his funeral, Shay was being lowered into the ground. And as Shay was being lowered into the ground, there was a voice from beyond the grave saying, let me out of here. Let me out of this freaking dark. Is that a priest I hear? Why is it so dark in here? This taunt, because that's exactly what it was, continued to go on. This is Shay. I'm in a box. I'm in a box. Hello, hello, hello again. I just called to say goodbye. Now, I know some of you might look at that and say that that is not a very graceful way for someone to go out, but because Shay was a jokester. His family said that they knew that he was going to pass away. They knew that he had a terminal illness and because he had that terminal illness, he wanted to be the one to have the last laugh at his funeral. Instead of his family members crying about 
them missing him, that in fact made them smile. And it just pretty much gave his family and friends tears of joy. He had been sick for well over three years and his daughter said this was something that he and she planned as a prank when he had his funeral. What would you guys do if you went to a funeral or a home going as I usually refer to them as and you heard somebody as their coffin is being lowered into the ground saying help, help, get me out of here, it's dark in the person's voice that is supposed to be deceased. I would totally and completely lose my entire mind. Yes, I would. Okay, so this particular story right here probably has to be one of the stupidest criminals that I have ever read about. Y'all, I have to search high and low a lot of times to find these stories, but when I find them, they are worth being found. There was a gentleman from Texas. He was due to get married this upcoming Saturday. Not this upcoming Saturday, but the Saturday in which this event took place. The groom. Went into a bank. Took a gun pointed the gun at the teller and told the teller, this is a robbery, I'm getting married, I don't have money for the rings, I don't have money for the venue, so I have to rob you. I will be getting married this Saturday. Give me all of the money in your drawer. First of all, you didn't gave her too much information, dummy. <laughs> he even told the cashier where he was getting married at and that he needed the cash for the wedding. And unfortunately, this was something that he had to do. After robbing the bank, they didn't say his name, thank God, because he, ooh, he decides that he's going to go to an area in Texas. My daughter lives in Texas, I don't, so I don't know too much about Texas and how Texas is laid out. But from what I can understand, there are a lot of greens and it has a lot of foresty areas. He went and sat in like this dead end road for hours upon hours upon hours, probably most likely regretting his stupid move. After a few hours, he received a call from his fiance indicating that I just seen you on a surveillance video on Facebook why did you rob the bank? And he so stupidly told her the reason that he robbed the bank was because he couldn't pay for the venue nor for the rings. Why didn't this man talk to this woman that he was marrying? Why didn't he talk to his family members? Somebody could have came together. I mean, he could have went on Amazon and got a ring. You know, he could have went to Walmart and got a ring, you know, temporarily. You didn't have to do that. And if he didn't have the money to pay for the venue, the most important thing is a wedding is that you have your ceremony. You can make your own honeymoon in your house. You can make your honeymoon in a hotel. If he didn't have the money for a venue, he could have had people come to his house or his parents' house or his aunt's house or something. There were so many different options that this gentleman should have used, but he tried to take the easy way out. And a lot of people who rob banks, a lot of people who rob stores, and the reason I know this y'all is because unfortunately, <laughs> I dated someone years ago who was from Kansas City, may he rest in peace. He was a corner store bank robber. I'm sorry, corner store. He was a corner store robber. He would go to the local corner stores in Kansas City. He would go to the local corner stores in Kansas City, Missouri, and he would rob them. He would sometimes get caught. And when he'd get caught, 
he would hear them on his trail. And at the time, I know one time he said he actually robbed a store and he knew that he would be going to jail. So what he did at that time, it was snowing real bad. He ended up hiding the money in an area in snow. And when he got out of jail, guess what he did? Went right back to that location and got his money. Y'all, yeah, I did. I dated somebody who was an ex small convenience store robber. He robbed probably four or five different convenience stores. And at this time when I was dating him, he was living in California. He was not into the robbery scene anymore. He was actually a working man and was doing well. And by that time he was ill. So why do people rob, rob? Why do people rob, steal and kill? I don't understand it. I mean, can you imagine if, if it's not something that you do on a regular basis, the fear and anxiety you would have in you or on you as you're doing it? Oh my God, I can't, I can't see it. That's why, you know what my theory is? If it's not mine, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it at all. I don't care if it's food that somebody else bought in this house. I am not touching it. If it don't belong to me, why is my husband making all of the noise in the background? I don't know you guys, but if it doesn't belong to me, I'm not touching it. Tell me what you guys would do. Tell me what you think about me but dating an ex convenience store robber. Bless his heart, y'all. He's cooking. My husband is. Last story is a story about a gentleman by the name of Ryan Kramer. Ryan Kramer. He grew up, was a very adventurous young man. I believe by the time Ryan was 19 years old, he had graduated from college. Very intelligent young man. Ryan was also a child who did not know his father. So one day at six years old, Ryan decided that he was going to go to his mother and ask his mother where his father was. So he went to his mother and he said, he's dead, right? In the conversation he and his mother had, she said, no, he's not dead. You are a product of sperm donorship. You are, I, I had you via a sperm donor. Can you imagine being six or seven years old? But with his intelligence, he was able, obviously, to grasp that. Because at the age of seven, he and his mother co-founded a registry called the Donor Sibling Registry. I'm sorry. He contacted the sperm bank at the age of seven. But in 2000, he and his mom founded a registry for donor siblings. It is a Facebook group. It is called the Donor Sibling Registry. It is now the largest matching website for those persons who were conceived via sperm donor. Ryan has met 20 plus siblings who have the same sperm donor. He met one sibling when he was 13 years old. And in their conversation, he could not even really hear everything that the young man was saying because he was so engrossed with the fact that the teeth look like his and the eyebrows look just like him. To make a long story short, he and his brother and other siblings have gotten along. A lot of them have met one another. Ryan keeps a large spreadsheet to keep track of all the siblings because they keep growing and growing and growing. They get together about twice a year. They have a reunion. They keep in touch with one another via text and phone calls and things of that nature. 
but they also use their Facebook group, Donor Sibling Registry, to keep in touch and help others find their sperm donor fathers. So when I found this story, I did a search of sperm donor fathers. And it seems that a lot of people have sought out to find their fathers who were sperm donors. I mean, it is a lot of stories on the internet of people who have sought out to find their fathers. And many of them have 20, 30, and 40 siblings. There is one gentleman who is a doctor. Yeah, y'all heard me. He's a doctor and he has a load of children have been taken to court because he was supposed to be a doctor in the sperm donor sector, but instead he was making money too. Craziness, craziness, craziness. Don't get me wrong. I don't know how I really feel about sperm donors. I don't, and I won't get into that right now because I think that anyone that has a working womb should be able to have a child. So that's all I'm gonna say on that. But when you have 20, 30, and 40 children that are walking around, possibly in the same state, there could be a cause of, what is that called? Um, what is that, babe? When brothers and sisters incest, people can work together, they could go to church together, they could, and not even know that they're siblings and get in romantic relationships. This is crazy. Something more needs to be done in that sector. It really, really does because that's why you end up having people, and every time I say this, my husband laugh at me, but that's why you end up having people that look like inbreds. People look really, they look kind of like humans, but then they almost look like apes. Or if they don't look like apes, they look like puppies. Or if they don't look like puppies, they just look strange. Inbreds. People that are kin that are sleeping together. Y'all, it should not be so. So some there needs to be some laws other than the laws that are in place. More laws need to be in place for sperm donors. I know that depending on where they do their donor ship or where they donate their sperm, you can be private, you can say whether or not you want your children to get in touch with you, all of that. I just think it's a crazy, crazy, very weird sector. But on the other hand, as I said before, I do believe that those who have working wombs, because not everybody's womb is working, unfortunately, and some people's womb is too old to work, and some people have had their womb removed for problems. So that's my take. Those are my four little stories. I hope that you guys have enjoyed my strange wacky and weird news stories of the week. I'll talk to you all real soon. God bless each and every one of you. Please like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning into Carol's Daily Sauce. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.